up, everyone? I am the Kaijin Okami with... Crooked Cane! You give me a minute, my phone is telling me to breathe. <laughs> Advent Nebula! See, I'm almost done, then I can talk about how computers control our lives in a fictional universe. This is our talk for Kamen Rider Zero One Episodes 12 to 18, which is presented to you by Creativity by Design. Wait, and Way to Weird Productions. I thought it was presented by Zaya! Yeah, I think Zaya owns this arc right now. But no, Creativity by Design, Way to Weird Productions. And Zaya. <laughs> I'm done. This is Silver Quill. Hello! So, last time we talked, did one of these videos, we were at episode 11, which ended with the actor getting shot and the detective trying to figure out what's going on by the way of the dodo. Uh -huh. So we have uh, had a lot of crap happen in the show okay. since then. But it's a good kind of crap. Yeah, not a bad kind of crap. Uh it's been... We went through the end of one arc and into the next arc since the last time. It's like you had a full digestion of events, and then the ensuing crap is actually a satisfying flow of information. Yes, that's as politely as I can put and it. And then when you come out of the bathroom, you feel so refreshed, you're like, I love what's going on! Presented by Zion. We need to start having toilets do that every time you flush. Presented by Zaya. <laughs> Given enough time, I'm pretty sure we'll have like the eye toilet. Eye poop. There you go. The eye poop. <laughs> <laughs> We've already got the squatty potty. Does that so, count? I'm going to get off of the... Um, toilet? Toilet. <laughs> so, this episode that we're going to first start talking about, episode 12, the famous detective is coming. It's a very innuendo-esque title. She beat me to it. But it has the first transformation of Shining Hoppa and the Dodo Magia second custom form. He also had that detective come in that was probably one of the most interesting characters that they had developed. And it was based off of a real actor. Yeah, because oh. the actor played himself. Oh, wait. The, you mean the actor who got shot? Yes. Shinya Owada is his actual name, and he played the character, Shinya Wada, who is um, a private eye, so to speak. So it had that kind of different feel for a Common Rider episode, because you played that gumshoe type mm -hmm. feel. It was very meta. And then it obviously led into part three, because you can't really can't talk about the whole thing without getting to part three, where we really saw Shining Hopper at work. We saw Shiny Hopper getting owned before Zaya owned him. You mean yeah. I work as the president's secretary? Yes. But uh, but I, I did love his the detective's eccentricities. I found it fascinating because for the most part, the entirety of the series, Aruto was the one who had the eccentricity and the humor. Everybody else was kind of like the straight man, so to speak, to him. And then you have... Um, Iwa, right? The detective? Yes. Yes. You have Iwa, who then comes in and is, once again, the humorous. And Aruto, throughout this three-parter, distrusts him at first because he had to play the straight man, which he was very uncomfortable with because he likes well, kind of having that control over the... Well, floor. I liked when um, the detective... Call Aruto up on the phone as he's talking to the other two guys for the company, telling Aruto, okay, or to the cops, he's talking to the cops, and Aruto on the phone saying, okay, I'm going to give you a bunch of instructions, and this is exactly what you're going to do. Well, and I like the way we actually learned a little bit more about the backstory of Lil Assassin, because <laughs> yeah. Lil Assassin, it's, it feels like forever ago <laughs> since we watched these episodes, but... The fact that Little Assassin is technically a clone off a clone off a clone, because every time he died... A boy band. He came back. It was like that cat came back the very next day yeah. song. And the dodo came back the very next day. And you're like, how is he continuing to come back? And when you find out there's multiple molds of the exact same... Five molds, assassin. I think it was. Yes, yeah. five molds. Because the first four, well, 
The first three were gone. The fourth one was the ascended little assassin. And then you have the fifth one that was continuously running away. Trying to not get yes. kidnapped. But the most interesting part was the production code they used to make these uh, characters. It was up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, A, B. Yeah. That was actually pretty <laughs> hilarious. If you don't know the Konami code, you're too young. I had a second grader the other day ask me if I knew what that code was. Yes. <laughs> If you've seen, if you've seen uh, Wreck-It Ralph, you should know. In fact, the kid actually in second grade, he asked me, have you ever beaten Contra with or without the code? So after we have finish up the, get to this end of the third parter, we really get to meet the enemy, so to speak. We actually, well, we see him, but we really get more knowledge of, okay, what is going on with... Harobi. Harobi! No, it's Harambi. Harambi. Harobi! Because Harobi is the CEO of Zaya. No. No, no, no. No, no. he's supposed to be Jinrai. Harobi is Mitsubo Jinrai. Oh, yes. Yeah, Who I finally learned to pronounce now that they're done. Yeah. Well, well, we'll get to that. But we also had the detective also sacrificed himself oh, to yeah. get the upgrade form for Shining Hopper to fully work. Yes. And I, bl I believe it was uh, Advent Nebula here who, who <clears throat> turned my build quote against me. I like this character. Yeah, I'll be sad when he's dead. <laughs> yeah! Because the next yeah. episode brought in the astronauts. Oh, his name is Gaiamatsu. Okay. Gaiamatsu. But we haven't talked about Shining Hopper. Well, Shining Hopper... It really didn't get a real good... Shining moment. Uh -huh. Yes, uh -huh. I did that. Until uh -huh. the astronaut arc actually was in full well, swing. That's, exactly. It's the next episode that really takes it. But So we get to see Yaiba. Get to see who she actually really works for. How Fua feels so betrayed by it. And he's still getting his ass kicked every episode. And well, he's kind of alive in this episode. He's <laughs> kind of alive. We, we were actually making the joke watching the most recent episode. He's been half dead for at least a quarter of this series. And we're only... 18 episodes eight, in. Yeah, I was going to say 18 episodes in and he's barely alive. Barely alive. But Shiny Hopper, I just love the catchphrase, When I shine, darkness fades. That's so corny and yet so badass at the same time. I yeah. know. But I also like that he's not... the One, he's it, the he wasn't calibrated for Aruto who's grown a lot as a fighter, which is a great uh, hurdle. You know, you're expecting, okay, he's transformed, he's going to kick ass and take names. And no, he's got to work with this. It requires, he's, power requires a sacrifice. He's got to earn what he's got with his power. He's not just gifted so, it. Which is, it, it stands in sharp opposition to both Power Rangers and Super Sentai, where lately the trend has been, oh, we need to win, here's a new item. And admittedly, even in uh, in... Uh, zero one. Up until now, the satellite says you need this to win. Here you go. That doesn't work half so well as what they had to do to achieve Shining Hopper. Well, what I find fascinating now that we're to the next episode, that um, before really introducing the title, we get to see the consequence <laughs> of the fact that he uses the satellites <laughs> as his Deus, Mo Deus Ex Machina tool. Because we are at episode 14, which is... We are the we, astronaut program. Yes. Which brings in two astronauts that are working to repair Raiden, or working to repair the satellite. You have the two brothers, Raiden and... I'm looking for the other brothers. Well, I also, I did like, yeah, when they said to Aruto, do you know how hard it is to get those back into the satellite? Yeah, especially after he summoned the bike... Because he was late for work. Yes. yes, that's what it was. So we have Raiden, who's the elder brother, who um, has been... Thunder. Basically repairing this satellite for more than 12 years. And then his younger brother, who eventually is going to be taking the mantle, Subaru. Um, but it's hilarious because you see them working on this. And then you see the satellite operational. And I can almost hear him... It is polite Japanese speak like, oh, come the fuck on! Yeah. Oh, come on! We just got that in there! Well, now you sound like a porn industry. <laughs> we will not go there. Um, I just did. But this makes me wonder, what about when the satellite turns into the mammoth mech? 
oh, I can almost imagine like how ape shit they have to go. <laughs> well, Raiden, I mean, Subaru is a pretty chill but and respectful. A mammoth is an elephant, not an ape. Uh -huh. but, but, but Raiden is like, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, he really takes on that, if you think about the fact that you kept on going thunder, because all I think of is Mortal Kombat, he really... He is a fired up person. Yes, it's like he's so electrified and so passionate. Like when he gets starting to be taken over by Metsubo Jinrai, yes, he actually fights back against it, pissed off that somebody's trying to take control of him. Or at least appears so at first. That is totally in character, so we believe it. It isn't until later they reveal, yeah, they did change him, it's just he'd been the mole for a long time. Every time I hear the term mole, I think of Austin okay. Powers <laughs> Hold on. Molly, 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 So it was 12 Molly. years he'd been working for the satellite? Yes. So everything's revolving, relating back to 12 years ago, because he, we just had when Thouser said, oh yeah, I worked with your grandpa 12 years ago. Well, they even... What's the year? Well, they even talked about the fact of 12 years... Well, no, that was in, 10 years ago. Oh, yes. When, for when Matsubo Jinrai first did the humanoid robot invasion. So you have a lot... Well, you have at least a decade ago where the world drastically changed. And we're kind of seeing, in a way, a fallout New Vegas. And, yes, fallout New Vegas. And we keep getting hints, and there have been just little tiny hints, of what's been going on between that and now. We're getting a little... Seeds planted for what may have um, happened ten years but ago. Yeah, and then also we had though, um, wasn't part two also where uh, what's her, what's his name, the guy that was the hawk. Isn't that when he damaged? Um, Gizu. Yes, Gizu. I was getting to that. The next episode is called the end of each, which is almost wrapping up. It's not the end of the first arc, but it's kind of putting everything in that position, because this is where they go to Daybreak Town, that, where the Ark is. Yep, and that's when they defeated Hirobu. Yeah, Hirobi. I, gotta, I gotta say, Mitsubishi on Rai went down pretty fast. <laughs> well, I can't, on Rai. I can't say Don't, yeah. they've gone down, because it doesn't seem like they're fully defeated. It seems like... Well, here's the thing. They lost in one battle, and the conquering team, the, the AI uh, Ames and, and Zero One, were so ineffectual at their jobs, they didn't patrol the, the settlement to find out if there was anything left over. Which we find out later there was somebody else. There's somebody else, and I'm just like, guys, you do realize there's more to victory than just, we beat up this one team, now we can go home, it's Miller time. Or is it is it Kieran Beer time over there? I don't know. But you, you gotta commit to more than just that. But oh, I forgot. Half the Ames guys were, were bandaged up and walking around on IV treads. And, and Fua, Fua deciding to use the uh, device oh. to end up powering up the Assault Wolf I mode. I did like also when um, Aruto uses the Assault Wolf mode. And then Fua, when he like snatches it back away from Aruto... Two is they should have had a, a Fua saying, "Get your own upgrade." Well, this is also the first transformation of the shiny assault hopper, which is even which right. is an even cooler catchphrase. Yes. yes, and you get to see the satellite and the arc both needed to use to get that form, which is what I love about Common Rider. Whereas in Sentai, you have the 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 Sentai are the positive and their opponents are the negative, light and darkness. Uh, Tokujer mm -hmm. is a good example. Kamen Rider really hits the gray because they all use the same power, and it's more about where you choose and how you choose to enable it. Gaim was a fantastic example. Oh, absolutely. So, and this is a good example in this show as well, because if you think about Yaiba alone, yeah, yeah. she is a perfect example of having the teeter on that gray because... For, She's playing three sides. Well, for the first for 13 episodes, essentially, we knew she was on one side or the Ames. other. We just knew what her aim was. We knew where she was at, ignoring the puns. And then we get to the point now, and as we progress further, 
of you actually feel bad for her at the same time because is this by choice or is it by threat or is it because she doesn't know any other way? Mm. Like she is such a sympathetic antagonist. Is she really an antagonist though? Right now, it kind of feels... It's a gray area. A common misnomer. Well, we did always say that she does never prosper. It may be why she gets the voted the fan favorite still out of the main three riders. Okay, I... This I don't... This is going to sound mean. But I do have to ask, is because she is the main female common rider... Is that part of the reason? It's kind of no, like... No, I actually feel it's because of how well written the character is. I, I ask this because Q Ranger Green was the most popular ranger for a time, even though she had a very minimal presence. Same with Lupin Ranger for Yellow, it, because she was an idol. I feel frustrated because I agree, she is very well written, and I like her role in this. I love her transformation forms. But if we're going by popularity, there's always a suspect motive. I... Though I think a presented by Zaya is going to take over the popularity. Well, the problem I have with the popularity polls that occur in Japan, because they do it for everything. Yeah. And I know we're guilty of it here just like anywhere else. Everyone does their own popularity things. I've never been a fan of popularity polls because I usually am not a fan of necessarily the underdog, but the one that's kind of an outlier. Who has the best clothing in her eyes. Hey, I want those damn green shoes. That oh, I'm God, oh, yeah. no. Somebody get no, me those shoes. No, If no. anybody finds those Converse, do not send him the link. Kajino Kami wants a pair of Aruto shows. shoes. Shows? So, you want a pair of Aruto shoes from a spinoff no. series, too? Kami so, Rider Zero Two, the spinoff. Oh, God, help me. So we're at the uh, last episode of the first arc. Uh, the Dawn of Zaya. Oh, yes, MisuRaman.net is on its own for a while. Where the one dude... Hawk dude goes boom, like, <laughs> oh, as oh. In, he ain't coming back from that. Yeah, you okay. ain't re no, he ain't recovered from that. Oh, yes. Hawk dude. Hawk. Hawk. His, I can't remember the name of his son. Yeah, I know. The, when I finally started to learn their names, they were dead. So I was Jin. like, Jin. Jin. Well, yeah. that's he was probably wishing Oh, wait, no. One. Jin no. is the son. Hirobi yeah. is the father. Yeah. yeah, I think Jin was. Jin, well, Jin is uh, Jin pretty much Jin and Juice. Jin died at Hirobi got taken out, saving Jin. Yeah, Hirobi was the Cobra. Who is still alive. The, the yes. You mean Scorpion. Scorpion, yeah. Who's reminding you of the yeah, Cobra Yeah, this is Ryuki. not Ryuki, where Sakura is the Cobra. But, uh... And we're terrible with names, apparently. We are, bad. we are. Well, okay, Jin probably was wishing for a glass of himself right then, because I'd want to get drunk before getting taken out. But I liked how mature he, he was after this terrible loss. Like, the innocent... Somewhat naive antagonist who carried around a gun with the with the security line still attached uh, was gone. This loss had forced him into sentience, and he was super de duper serious now, kind of mimicking uh, Assassin Chan, who who matured into this full blown killer. So it made it a lot darker, but it also made it more satisfying when he was defeated, because he was basically gone full. And bizarre. then. So my favorite thing about this particular episode is you have literally an end of an arc. We haven't had in the Common Rider series for a very long time where it actually feels like you have arcs. A guy, I think, was the last one that really... Well, no, actually, x was broken No, arcs. Bill did that, but it... It failed. Yeah. It didn't feel as complete. It, well, that's what I mean. It feels like the end of a story. It fell apart at the end, I think. Yes, where this, it felt like, okay, this is a clear-cut line in the sand. We are moving from one story to the next. Yes, characters are going to carry over because they're necessary for the plot and the story. Well, that, and also I like that um, even though it was partially a Christmas episode, they didn't all just make it a full Christmas episode because they still kept the plot going. Yeah. Yes, and we have in this episode introduced the amazing... Kakakis and the Awaking Arsino. I'm not even going to do this, Zetsu Mariskis, for the greatest, greatest transformation ever in Common Rider history that follows in the next episode. I am 
the only president in common. Although, before we, I just want to comment on something you said earlier, Kelly. Mm. Uh, okay. I don't care. We're bad with names. Uh, this is the end of an arc, but the arc didn't end. Uh, <laughs> see, why did you let him talk? Why did you let him talk? Oh, because I was trying to be nice and not interrupt him this time. So, as, as much as I love my friend's laughter, their groans are even more sad. So, my favorite part about this particular episode, um, I am the one and only pre present and common writer, is the fact that you have this introduction of a term that is going to live in infamy presented by no, Zaya. no oh the thousand percent you yeah. finally have a joke landed by ruto that everyone unanimously is like you know i'm proud of you <laughs> i'm so proud of you ruto finally because our lovely lovely evil president zai or guy guy says, we have raised our sales by 722%. And Ruto, perfect little boy that he is, finally lands it, and he's like, oh, not by a thousand? Which, I didn't say I was proud of him. I just said, damn, Aruto, that's savage. Well, it was savage at and the same time. That, it and that's the episode when Izu also made her own. She makes her own pun. Which is awful. Wait, oh no, it was awful. And then she still lands with because I'm a Ruto. And I'm like, oh my god. Oh my god. god. And, that, and little, he, that little fourth wall joke where yeah. Ruto's like, she's learning my bad habits. And then we have, okay, I want to buy your company out, so let's do a competition of five rounds, starting with flower arrangements. The most extreme sports. Because apparently flower arranging makes sense. Well, it's, okay. Culturally, flower arrangement is huge in Japan. They have actual schools about it. It's very much but, like tea ceremony. Okay. I imagine one of the battles is going to be tea Wait, ceremony. So you want me to determine if I'm going to sell you my company or not over flowers? It's a buddy industry. Mm. That's how you know it's Silver Quill. <laughs> Fate of the human years on the line through flower arranging. That's one of many. Well, that's actually flower arranging. One of many. That's and then they, <laughs> and then they said, "Okay, we want you to do a sunset." How the hell do those even look like? I mean, this guy's got like bamboo sticks popping out or well, copper sticks. But and, they're gold. Well, whatever. They're popping out. It's okay. like how's it a fun fun? All right, continue. What were you gonna say? Well, okay, even before the competition, which was. Okay, it, the competition is a little hard to wrap the mind around why they would do something so... Dumb? Yeah, silly. <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> we haven't got Yes, we have them twitching. What's that? Twitching. <laughs> but, T.O.B., I am not business savvy to know about the intricacies of corporations trying to buy each other out. But, if a T.O.B. is an offer to buy a company, what's stopping our turn from saying... No, I would not like to sell you my company. Have a nice day. Because the question is, does he actually own 51% of the company? Right now they seem to have a majority share, but then the question is, especially in this information age, did nothing send up a warning sign? Hey, someone's buying all the shares. They need to fire their accountant bot. But and see, it's... Oh, wait, the accountant is with Mitsubishi well, on Rai.net. Here's the thing, though. If... Guy was friends with the grandpa. He probably was already given the shares back 12 years ago. Or the accountant is the final Which villain of this series. Which, we will get to this whole friendship because I have friendship. some Friendship. Okay, right, right. this is my new headcanon. But best, best common Rider introduction for a common Rider villain since Lango in Blade. Okay, even Lango does not live up to the fact that you have two progress keys... And the way he does it, it's like, I don't know if I would remember one hand goes over here, then I lift up the other progress key, and then I flip it. I'm like, wow, that's so much detail. And then he flip, gets them both in, and when the two great horns cross. Five great horns. Five great horns cross. The golden, golden warrior. The golden warrior is born. The golden, golden warrior, warrior thousand. Thousand is born. Okay, we are totally making this terrible, but the way it's said 
So presented by Zion. But when it said when the five gray horns cross, the golden warrior Thouser is born, and you're like, oh my god, this is like an action movie. Yes. Presented by Zion. And. I made this comment to Kaiji Okami after we first watched it. Um, Zaya is so American. I feel like everything Zaya does with having this over the top transformation, with having. Presented by Zaya. And then the copyright Zaya under yeah. all the attacks. I, I just, I'm like, this is something an American company. And all the attacks is in English. Well, and all the attacks is in English on the screen oh, for every hey. attack. However, can we say phrasing with jacking? Yeah. Which I think of theft, but. Um. Uh, the copyright Zaya Enterprises is in Japanese at 50%. Yeah, Enterprises, Japanese. Which is why when we, first, how, when we first watched this, I wondered why they were putting the copyright twice in the subtitles. So, like, oh, oh, that, I missed the end there. Because I was too busy going, like, holy crap! I have not seen corporate labeling this, in, this invasive since Tiger and Bunny. <laughs> well, and. It feels like he really does feel like an actual version of Lunatic. Yeah, he from does. From Tiger and Money. But Lunatic had no corporate sponsoring. He's his own corporate sponsoring. But uh, um, if you have not seen Tiger and Bunny, do. shame on it's you. It's the best anime of the decade. It's it, it. I've fallen out of anime, but Tiger and Bunny remains one of my favorites. Uh, but here I'm distracting us. Sorry. But no, Thouser. At first, when I'm like, Thouser, before I saw a transformation or anything, I'm like, that's the stupidest name hey, ever. And who would have thought a Hercules beetle and a rhinoceros would make an intimidating and looking well, power? What I love is um, the way he looks. It looks like Sauron, so I just keep saying he's he wants the one henching device to rule them all. Okay. He would. But, oh. oh, go ahead. Well, I, I have to confess, when I see his transformation and the five horns cross, all I'm thinking of is Deadpool. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but you make a com you make a comment about one r one ring to rule them all. I think of Highlander when we get to the next episode. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> oh, no, don't do that. With Fuwa? He's this no. is my floristry. Because we find out one very particular thing about Guy. And once again, every time, and I've seen this episode twice, and I've said this both times to Guy, fuck you, he is 45 years old. He looks... 24. Like he's perpetually, as he says, forever 24. I'm like, one, there's a company called Forever 21, so once again, almost like product placement. And two... Because even Aruto, when he sees a picture of him with his grandfather, he's like, how old are you? And Izu's the one who's like, he's 45 years old. What? And I also like the, when Aruto's And like, I think of Highlander. And I like when Aruto's like, hey, are you part of a boy band? Is that why? <laughs> a pop yeah. star. But, and then, the, then there's guys' uh, denouncement of youth, preening without dignity, uh, what was it, impulsiveness? And yes. then supple skin. It's like... I think that's him saying, damn, this supple skin, I can't quit it, even though I hate everything else about it. And, and then you have Tachibana, of <laughs> course. <laughs> yeah, Tachibana. And the fact that the um, well, human gear learned from Tachibana. <laughs> you have him sulking. Yeah, actually, just for context, when we watched Kamen Rider Blade a couple years ago, ta the, how many times Tachibana's name got called kind of traumatized one of the main <laughs> characters is named Tachibana. <laughs> yeah. Tachibana-san! 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 Tachibana! Okay, Kamen Rider Garen. Uh, what was the name of the human gear girl? Asami. Yeah. No, Sakuyu. Sakuya? Um, hold on. Now you can make Because that's kind of interesting, if that is the case. Sakuyo. Sakuyo okay. Ichirin. I was just thinking because actually in Blade his name was Tachibana Sak Sakuya. Ha! <laughs> but, so, I, outside of Tachibana, please <laughs> don't die. <laughs> <laughs> this actually... Sets up the next big phase, I think, of the story. Exactly. And that's not 
only can the human gears be taken oh, over. Wrong. Now the humans can get the Raid Riser and be taken over by Magia. And it seems like they have to have that device that Tachibana's wearing. Ha! But what I find so, so fascinating is that guess who in this room called it? I hate you. <laughs> because you said, oh, it's not just going to be them anymore. Okay, so what you're saying though is now that they're, they're now going to give human gear. <laughs> Silver Quill! Oh. Get up here because I can't handle his bad puns. If I have to deal with dad jokes, I'd And that's Kaji no Kami! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Advent, I think we're the only ones sane on this couch, and there's something wrong with that. I'm not on the couch! <laughs> <laughs> no, you're touching my song. But I do find it fascinating that... The Raid Riser Pro Rise keys that he gets is Buffalo. Yeah. And and it's a rampaging type animal that our hometown, because we know all about them. Um that You know if they wanted to win easily, they should have challenged him to a football match. <laughs> <laughs> and even with it being rocket powered. Heck, if there's a Bronco <laughs> in this show. Can we play you again football? Okay, the fact that he had a rocket pack and Thouser still took him down. How about, the, the how about Thouser, though, when he did his M. Bison attack on Fuwa? <laughs> oh, yeah, we haven't gotten back to Fuwa. Silver Fuwa? Fuwa. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you only had Fuwa. Resurrection! Uh, it was probably the best. Uh, this was probably the best fight so far in that uh, parking garage. Yeah, I was going to say, you should have used the Sorry. Phoenix down. No. no, Resurrection presented by Zaya. Oh, that's Resurrection S. Okay, Fua, so we did miss that little side plot. So Fua and Yaiba are talking because Fua... Hirobi woke up Hiro in the prison. Hirobi woke up, told Fua some things that were going on, um, which happened actually in the previous episode. And then here, Fua... Um, confronts Guy in a parking her. Confronts Yaiba to ask, okay, why did we do this? And then we had continuity. Yeah. Because they actually showed the scene where Yaiba said, I am going to betray you. I might betray you. Or I might betray you. And we get to that point now of almost like things coming together. And then you have a white BMW drive into the middle of their fights. And nearly kill both fighters, and then Guy gets out and says, Stop attacking my valuable employee! And we're like, really? You treat her like shit. He, her relation to him is so intimidated, it's hard not to view it as abusive. Right. I will say, though, I actually feel like Fuwa should have lost that fight without assault bullet. Because he does everything with wrong with the gear. <laughs> yeah. He, I feel like he should have... If he was going to win, it'd have to be through ridiculous OP. He Sorry, had no YouTube chance. world, I'm cooking dinner. Yeah, we should probably end this one here. No, no, I'm not done. This is going to take a few more minutes. Well, if that case, I'd like to comment on two things that I, that I feel we passed over. Okay. Yes. The first is Assault Hopper's special system with the particles of light, or the, the shards of light that attack on his behalf. Oh, the one where it shows the different combinations yes. you can do. No, no. Oh, where he's able to predict movements. No, 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 no. That, that, that's Shiny Hopper's innate ability. Yes. The Assault Hopper, which Arzu learns uh, while connecting uh, with Izu, where they make the pinky promise, uh, it's basically, it's like funnels and, and bits and dragoons from the Gundam series. Well, uh, yes. An assault system that is powered more by the mind than by any physical power. Are you saying he's a new type? He's a new type of Kamen Rider. Well, he, okay. I did think of that, especially when we got to episode 18, and you saw, you really saw his morality and his ethics in action. And people might, and if Japanese audiences, which I could certainly respect, don't find fondness out of them, I'm hoping seeing this level of protecting not only human gear, but human life at the same time, 
because he was so concerned not just about stopping and protecting the community at large, but also protecting the person. Because unlike a human gear, where, as they did with Sukuyo, where you can download the data again and rinse and repeat the model, human life, it's one and yeah. done. But right. there was a little something. It's like Guy knew that he wasn't going to die after he attacked him. I don't know, necessarily know for sure. I did think that as well, that maybe Guy... It, the, sad, the first time I didn't think, but viewing this a second time just recently, it, Guy knows something. I just don't trust... As much as I, I find him fascinating, and I know he's a villain, I don't trust certain elements of his ethics. And I'm also wondering how he's going to be the foil for a bigger villain. So are you really saying he really is a bad guy? Yes. Yeah! Wow. Wait. I was going to just say, duh. Who, who, was, <laughs> who was the bad guy attacking? Tachibana. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, be careful. Don't hit the table. You're worried about the table? I'm worried about you getting a concussion. We have taken up enough time on these episodes, so show is still doing great. I know, I'm I know. loving this show. And I'm at the point where I'm ready to just stop watching Rio Soldier all together, but we we're at the point where we're too committed. We've got like seven episodes left. And I think the next episode that we do these, because and sadly I will not have the Thouser belt, which is certainly fine because I have a lot Presented by Zaya. of Zero One stuff to show off maybe during the next video. Ha <laughs> ha. Alright. This is... Evan Nebula. Corellica Kane. Dead Quill. Up yours, Tachibana! And Kajino Kami. <laughs> Signing off. Presented by Zaya. Bye.